Congratulations, you just got hired, you are at your first job, and now what? Well, you have to think about the future. Think about the future. So today's FNA is all about a five-year plan. That sounds very ambitious. I even have a 10-year plan, but it's about thinking ahead. Now you get your job, you're enjoying it, but what are you gonna do next? So you got your job. So the first thing you need to do is enjoy it because you work really hard. You worked on your reel, you went through all the classes. There's a lot of work that goes into getting your first job. So don't think about anything, just enjoy it. You work really hard for this. But then this is where I kick in, I go, all right, let's think about the next five years. But before I tell you what I mean about this, hi, my name is JD. If you're here for the first time on this channel, you know the pitch. I do animation lectures like these. I do animation analysis clips. I do rig reviews, product reviews. I do a bunch of stuff. You see all the flashing thumbnails. Feel free to browse around the channel. You know, this is the beginning pitch. If you like it, subscribe. If you don't like it, just hang in there, maybe watch it. We'll see what happens later, but that is that. It's the pitch at the beginning. It helps my channel grow, but let's get back to the points here. So everything I want to say here is going to be very subjective and very individual because it really depends on who you are, where you're at, your financial situation, your goals, your dreams. Just there's so much where everything I'm saying, there might be maybe one out of 10 no to go, ah, oh, yeah, or all of them. I don't know, but it's just there as a information dump and you can pick and choose. You can comment, like whatever we can come up with to go. This would be an interesting list to pay attention to as you move forward with your career. So you started at your new job, you love it, you're animating. So now you have to kind of shed the idea of, well, maybe I'm not good enough, better work really hard. Just ignore all of that. Let's pretend you're awesome. You probably already are. I mean, but pretend you're going to be even more awesome, right? Right? Everything's going to be awesome and you can stay there forever. Like that is your possibility. You can stay at this company. Now, is this something you want to do? Because you might get into a company or whatever job you have in terms of animation and you love it, but you know, I'm going to be there for a couple of years and then I will make the choice to go somewhere else and then learn something else, make other connections, work with a different company, different style. So again, you don't, there are different paths. You can stay at a company if that's the possibility, or you can also decide to just switch around. Again, if that's a possibility, everybody's going to comment like, yeah, but I don't have a choice. I totally understand. This is again, hypothetical, but I want to bring up some points you got to think about. So let's pretend you start, it's awesome. And you want to stay there. You really like the company. You like the people you want to stay there. So what do you need to think about? Well, you got to think in terms of, practical things like the commute, right? Maybe you are in an apartment, you're sharing a place with some friends, but it takes you an hour, an hour and a half, two hours to get to the job. Is this something you can sustain long term? Maybe public transportation is deteriorating and it's not going to get better. Maybe you need to get a car. Well, gas prices, projected gas prices, who knows? It's very difficult to project there. But is a longer commute something you want to do over time? Maybe now you can do it because you enjoy the job. But after a while, you realize it's two or three hours out of my day, I could do something else or be with someone else. Just something to consider. And as I mentioned before, housing, maybe you are in an apartment, maybe later on you have a family, you're gonna get a house or not. Again, it's all very individual, but think about housing costs. Is this where you are right now, a good place to stay long-term to be at that company? And then depending on where you are, city or country, there's cost of living increases and expenses. Maybe right now you were living on a student budget and everything was great. Now you're getting paid by a company. It's awesome. You have more money you can save. But then over time, five, 10 years, is this something you can sustain? You got to think about potentially switching things around. Let's pretend you have kids, right? You might get married, husband, wife, partner, whatever. But you got kids, you got to put them somewhere in the school. Well, where you are right now, is that a good school district? Is there anything in terms of the neighborhood that you want to change? Because because again, the commute to the school is too long and then going back to work. And let's pretend it is not good. So is there a place where you can see yourself by saving up money? And actually, I would recommend another channel here that has money tips. Brian has awesome clips, so don't just go for there, go for his channel. Well, let's pretend that's what you want to do. You want to have kids and you're looking around and you see a place, oh, I can move over there with my partner and have the school there and then go to work. That's all possibility. Because you never know. Sometimes you have school districts where you're, you want to send your kid to school and the school placement is like a lottery. It's all random. You can't specifically choose where you want to put in your, your kids or one kid, whatever. And then you might have to drive a really long place to bring the kid over there and then go to work. There's a lot that comes with it besides changing diapers. And that's not even work related. That's just you as a person, private life, and just the, the surrounding environments and, and conditions that will potentially prevent you from staying at a company for a long time. Now, let's pretend you don't want to stay at a company for a long time. Then you got to think about where you want to go next. And I know it's like, well, I got to get have a real first and can I go next? Again, hypothetically, you can choose, right? I know real life conditions are totally different. You might have to go to a company you don't really want to, but that's the only company that called back. I know there are many variables, but again, let's pretend you are at the current company, you like it, but you know you want to change. So it's going to be the same that I just mentioned. Is that new company where you have to go? This could be a new city, new country, who knows? All the other factors where it's school, housing, commute, all that stuff will again apply. 
but also the switch. So let's pretend it's not a given. You're gonna have to work on a new reel because maybe, I mean, there are multiple possibilities, but maybe the work you're doing at the current company is awesome and you get the shots, you can assemble a reel, and that is enough to apply somewhere else and then get a job. But what if it isn't? What if the project is really long-term and it's gonna take a long time until you get the shots that you worked on for your demo reel? That means that you have to work on a new reel, new shots to apply it to another company. So now you have to factor in extra work outside of your daytime work. And how is that gonna work with your hobbies, with your friends, with your partners, your, your married life, whatever it is, you gotta somehow schedule in extra time to work on outside animation to create a new reel. So again, something to think about if you wanna switch companies. And is that gonna be a different style? Is it gonna be from cartoony to VFX, VFX to cartoony, games, whatever. You're gonna to have to think about, well, this is totally different. I have to work on a new style, practice some more. Maybe the first couple of shots are not gonna be great right off the bat. I need to do some more practice shots and then work on the demo reel piece. All of that you have to factor into the schedule and his decision-making of, I wanna to switch to another company. What does that mean for me? What are the consequences, repercussions, as in like time and schedule and stuff like that. And let's pretend it all works. You got your reel. Is the company that you wanna work for paying for moving costs? And if not, well, that's something else again, you have to factor in. You have to save up money for that move and so on. So again, many factors to consider if you wanna move places, especially if it's a different country. But then of course you have to factor in immigration and visa issues and so on. It's, it's, a, it's a massively big topic. Now the positive though about switching, again, if that's your choice and you're that flexible and you can go about that, you will potentially have the opportunity to raise your salary. As you switch within companies, again, if that is something you can do, the more you switch, the more experience you gain, you new tools, new styles, it's just you're getting better and better. And it is an exchange of services at the end of the day, even if we love the job. So as you switch, there's a possibility that your salary goes up and up and up. Versus if you stay at one company for a long time, it's probably gonna be a slower ascent into whatever career ideas you have in terms of titles or financial situation. Well, let's piggyback on that. So let's pretend you do wanna stay. I found the company I wanna work for, I'm in, I'm enjoying it, I'm loving it. So now you gotta think about, okay, what does it look like in five years? And I got a 10 year thing, but that's really crazy time. So let's pretend five years. And again, it doesn't have to be five years, obviously, right? For you, it could be two years, three years, seven years, who knows? I just, I'm just picking five, I don't know, it's, it's, a, it's a number. But think long-term. So I'm there as an animator. If I wanna stay there for a longer time, do I have aspirations to become a lead animator? or a supervising animator. And what does that mean? So then you have to look at what are other lead animators and supervisors at that company doing? How do they get to that position? Are they just animating, which is already hard enough, right? But are they doing other things on the side? Are they more involved in story, storyboard, story, anything with story department? Or in terms of previous, maybe they're no more about camera work and editing, maybe even sound design, a single piece to show to a client. So just think in terms of what additional skills do they have or have they learned and developed to get to that position? position because you can't just be the same and then expect, you know, salary bump and promotion and all that stuff. You gotta be more valuable and bring more to the table. So is that something that you can do? Is that something that you want to do? And how are you gonna get there? Is the company providing classes or any kind of training to get there? Or is that something you have to do on the side? So again, just like the real, now you have to factor in work outside of your daytime work to get there. And I mean, you can also ask the leads and soups, like what did you do and how did you learn all this? I don't know, I don't know if they're gonna tell you, but you know, hopefully this is a, uh, you know, a friendly bunch and you can learn from them by like shadowing them, watching them, you know, whatever the path is, however you're going to go about it. But if you are the company and you're deciding, I want to stay there and you have those aspirations, then it's time to start thinking about that where, how do I get there? I want to be whatever, lead in a couple of years. Well, what do I need to do to become that and for the company to consider me? And again, I say company and just that situation is going to be so different for so many people. But hopefully this makes sense in terms of a, a general piece of advice. And then there's a 10 year plan, which I know it sounds bananas. I mean, now Nowadays, do people stay for 10 years? But I mean this in terms of what is your really long-term dream goal? Because 10 years could be, all right, well, I'm doing this job and I might have my eye on other companies. So I want to switch around and gain experience and, and do all kinds of network. But long-term, 10 years, let's say you want to become a director, right? You start as an animator. Like, I, I like doing all this and I understand the process, but I'm more interested in story and really long-term, I want to animate and understand what it takes to, to animate and the process. And if I give notes, the amount of work it takes to do all this schedule-wise, but I'll Ultimately, I want to go into story and then into directing. And that is totally fine. Why not have a 10 year crazy goal? And it doesn't have to be crazy, who knows? And you can still roughly think about what you need to do to get to that point. What I understand is also totally ridiculous. I mean, in 10 years, so much can happen in 10 years. I mean, just look at how the world is now. Just within the last two years, things have changed dramatically. But why not? I would still think long-term. 
because you can think in terms of I gotta save up money doesn't matter where I'm gonna end up how windy that road is I'm gonna still end up there because that's my goal and you still have to learn additional skills to get there so you might as well start now or at least start thinking about how you're gonna get there and all this might just put a massive bummer on you just getting a job as I said at the beginning congratulations you got a job that's awesome and again enjoy it now you're actually animating and you're getting paid for it and you have you know so many friends around you and dailies and just the work environment it's going to be awesome and then after a couple you know whatever months years i don't know it's totally up to you again it's very subjective and individual start thinking five-year ten-year plan it's not five years but maybe a couple weeks <laughs> I'm trying to find a segue for my workshops, but if you feel like, well, that's all cool and I'm working my reel, can you help me work on the reel and give me other tips to get to my goal? Absolutely, I will do my best. I got workshops, link in the description with all the information. And again, it's not five years, but you get 16 submissions. So if you do weekly, it's 16 weeks, definitely shorter than five years or 10 years. But hopefully something you're interested in. Again, let me know, email me. And that is that, that is the end that I'm checking here. It's a bit of a long, rich clip. So thank you for watching as always till the very end. I appreciate your patience. And that is that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next upload.